God has put us in the middle of a vineyard and says, now. Yet, we find other preoccupations in avoidance behavior. Now, I know all about avoidance behavior. That's one of my specialties. I was very good at it in high school and college, and my grades showed exactly that. And, and I used to, when I first started preaching sermons, I'd start about Friday noon getting the sermon ready. I've learned since then, but my high school and college, eh, not so great. <laughs> it, it means that we are called now to do things and not put it off. Matthew 7, 16 says this, it says, You will know them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorns or figs from thistles? In the same way, every good tree bears good fruit, but the bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, you will know them by their fruits. Do the world know us by our fruits? It's time for us to harvest. So the first question is, well, well where do we go? Well, we can start right here. Reverend Kerry Bauman talks of a New York ophthalmologist who said that there were more nearsighted people in New York City than any other place. His reasoning was that people routinely operate down among the skyscrapers, hemmed in by walls of huge high buildings, which in turn limit their field of vision. For many, the only opportunity for distance vision is to look up at the sky, which very few do. Thus, he said, the constant use of our eyes for short distance tends to, for nearsightedness and dissatisfaction, dissatisfaction. As Christians, we can be so focused on our own little worlds, our own immediacy, our own domains, that we lose sight of the world around us. But we are called to be kingdom-sighted. You know what that means, kingdom-sighted? That means something bigger than what we can see by, by the closeness of where we are, but something that God has planned for us along the way. We are in the vineyard right now. Did you, you get that? We're here. We're here now. The harvest is upon us now. Today we'll harvest our financial commitments for the coming year. But that is, by the way, uh, where's Kristen? There's another word for it. What was it? Estimated giving potential. That was one we used one year. That was much more friendly also. So try estimated giving potential. So whatever it is, that's only the beginning. Because we have prayers, we have presence, we have gifts, service, and witness. We are to give our lives to the one who gave his life for us. Amen? 2 Peter, in the first chapter, starts in verse 5 this way. For this reason, you must make every effort to support your faith with goodness, and with goodness with knowledge, and with knowledge with self-control, and self-control with endurance, and endurance with godliness, and godliness with mutual affection, and mutual affection with love. Then it starts in verse 8 to say this. If, for if these things are yours and are increasing among you, they keep you from being ineffective and unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For anyone who lacks these things is short-sighted and blind and forgetful of the cleansing of our past sins. In other words, we've been given new life. We've been forgiven. Amen? And yet we're forgetting. We're forgetting that this gift is ours because we're not responding in thankfulness. Where do we see the harvest? We have been in the vineyard all along. We've been here all along. Last Sunday night was an eye-opener for me. My conversation, I was parking cars. That was my job. That's what I like to do. It was trunk or treat. And I don't know, we, I guarantee you we had 700 people here, probably 1,000 people. And a couple of times I had to actually go to the other end of the property because I had to leave every man for himself. That's how many cars we had here. But I did meet this couple that were leaving after being here and, and they had Washington plates. So I'm just, I've traveled all over the country as a bus driver. And I said, so where in Washington are you from? And she was from Seattle and he had been stationed 
stationed there and they were a family they had brought their kids in and and we had this conversation I started talking about Seattle because I've been there as a bus driver you've been everywhere you can talk about everywhere and all of a sudden not from me but from the dad he said he just out of the clear blue said well we've actually been looking for a church and of course I'm like okay we have service at 9 and 11 9 o'clock is our is our traditional service 11 is our contemporary and we have we have a kids ministry and it is great because it's in its own kids building right over here in fact the third car in and the trunk or treat was our children and families director and uh, minister in uh, Brittany and and she's wonderful and and finally I said and there I am sweating in my orange shirt that I wore last week which wasn't this one this is a different orange shirt but this is in honor of all the pumpkin people I'm sweating to death and I said I'm the pastor here they am out parking cars so those of you that were with us for the first time our service is just symptomatic of our whole life together we just do stuff and have a good time doing it crazy ways and and they were like they were so excited to hear about it and to hear what was out there and and I think I stumbled onto a harvest moment it wasn't me it was God in the midst of this conversation with these people who had just sugared up their kids and had to take them home and figure out how to put them to bed. <laughs> Holy cats. God works in incredibly and mysterious ways. Sometimes we think what we think is obvious may not be. A father and his two kids that said last Sunday night had been at the trunk and treat and, and then in to eat hot dogs in Hanstein Fellowship Hall and he came up to the kitchen counter when they were just about ready to leave and he said you guys are great and we're just so excited and the kids had so much fun it was wonderful and, and somebody in the back and one of our cooks that I don't wish I knew which one it was but they said hey well you should come to church here sometime he kind of turned around and all of a sudden he went this is a church <laughs> And of course, I'm in the background muttering, we just fed a thousand people and he doesn't know it's a church. <laughs> but his point of view was for his kids and what he was there for. And, he, and so I went out and said, yeah, I'm the pastor. Hi. And he goes, you guys are great. I'm going to come to church here. That's what the kingdom's like. That's the way things work. And, and, I, and for to have these people come here and make a difference. Spending time in Hanstein Fellowship Hall, I, I was, when I stopped parking cars because I got scared, I went in and started, I was making lemonade. That was my job. But it was, it was like a loaves and fishes experience for me. We don't have the money for it, but, but hot dogs and buns tubular fishes and buns if you will uh, for hundred and seventy five dollars paid not out of our budget but by our children's designated account and, and a gift of chips from one of the families who by the way worked the entire night fed everybody that came we had enough for everybody if we look with kingdom eyes in that craziness from one end of the campus to the other was this holy moment right in the middle and there was just enough left over for kid men last Wednesday, the kids ministry. Or as Luke 9, 17 says, all eight were filled. What was left over was gathered up 12 baskets of broken people. Pieces. People gathered and eating together. It wasn't worship service, but it was a harvest worship. Amen? Thanks to the hard work of the disciples, but the scriptural account of the feeding of the 5,000 doesn't talk about the worker bees. You ever know this is that? But think about if you were one of those disciples. Imagine feeding 5,000 people. Uh, we always just get hung up on the fishes and the, the loaves and the fishes and talking about the miraculous redoing of this. How about those people that had to feed all 5,000 just, just passing the stuff from one another? They had to have been exhausted and thinking, this is nuts. What a crazy thing. And 5,000 counted the guys not the women and the children because that's the way they counted back then. So it was this huge crazy mess of things going on. And in the midst of it was this holy moment. And the people in the kitchen last Sunday night and the people with their trunks and marshmallow roasts and all these crazy worn out people 
were the disciples the good news of Jesus Christ in the same way those first original disciples who followed Jesus. But I want to go further. Imagine if first church would go beyond for the harvest. Proverbs 10.5 says, He who gathers up crops in the summer is a wise son, but he who sleeps during the harvest is disgraceful. Imagine if we had 20 more people there last Sunday night, and their job was just to invite people to church. Hey, Jeff Fun, why don't you come see us in church sometime? Imagine if we had 20 people in the middle of 1,000 people doing that. We were all so busy because the harvest was plenty, but there weren't enough laborers. I spoke to a couple about our preschool, and they wanted to know if we accepted vouchers. Fortunately, I knew the answer. I said, yep, we do. And I, but I was racing off to the next thing. Imagine if we had 40 more people and the prayer team and, and the prayer team from the thrift boutique. Imagine if we had more laborers who gave a tour of the facility so people could see how much we have to offer our community. You see, we need to do this. We've been given all this. I mean, there's people here today that don't even know how big our campus is because we haven't toured them around. And, and we need to do this. John 4, 38 says, I sent you to reap that which you did not labor. Others have labored and you've entered into their labor. And what we do, what we do here at this church is we continue a harvest that began 132 years ago, right over in this little church on the corner. The harvest is now, and we're going beyond in 2020. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.